Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome replay viewers. Glad to have you. Pallister, Life with Passion. Coming to you to talk to you again today about starting up a business without capital. This is something that I've done every time I've started one of my businesses. And I am glad to have you here to talk about this and answer your questions. I want to share with you a little bit about how I did it, about how um, it's possible for you to and uh, find out what you what you want to know. Hi, Marilyn. Great to see you. Thanks for thanks for joining. All right, so let's get started. My name is Christine McAllister. I am the founder of Life with Passion, and I help entrepreneurs. Uh, aspiring entrepreneurs start businesses out of their dreams. I work with women to help them uh, create their dream lives. And Life with Passion um, exists to take everything that I've learned in the last decade as an entrepreneur um, to help women um, move faster at, toward their dream lives, get out of their nine to five jobs as fast as they want to and use and doing something that they really, really actually enjoy as opposed to just something that you know pays the bills or whatever. To get to spend your days doing what you love. And this is a question that I get all the time. How can I start up my business? I don't have money. How can I start my business without capital? I'm here to tell you that starting an online business is the best way to do that. That's where my experience is. All of my businesses I've started without capital. and. So I want to hear from you all as to the reasons that you feel you need capital. What would you spend that money on? And let's talk about other ways to look at them. I also want to share with you one of the most profound things that I think you can do to shift your opinion about what's possible for you when it comes to creating a business um, and talk to you a little bit about my experience too and how I did it, some of the things that have worked for me. because. At this point, I've started, I've started three businesses on my own. I co-founded another, all successful businesses, and I am happy to say that I didn't take out a loan for any of them. So I know it's possible. And so let's dive in. I want you to ask questions as they come up for you, and I'll answer them. But let's dive into the big, the big point that I want to make about shifting. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting your people. Um, look at my little mug, isn't that cute? Little penguin. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Let's see what my dog's doing. No. Pogo, no. Come here. Um, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest thing that I want you to start wrapping your mind around is that you can take the idea of what you think you need money for and you can leverage your time instead. Hey Candace, thanks for joining, good to see you. You can take the idea of what you think you need money for in many, many cases and leverage your time instead. So a lot of people feel like, okay, I'm gonna start my own business, I need to take out a big business loan, right? Actually, I never advise that in starting an online based business and here's why because it's better for you to grow slow and to learn all the different pieces along the way and to leverage what my very wise father calls sweat equity as opposed to someone else's money because you're going to be a lot more invested and understand more about your business if you're leveraging sweat equity if you're leveraging your time now if the first thing that you think is, I don't have time. I didn't either. I was working a nine to five job. My commute was 90 minutes in heavy traffic. I had a house to take care of. I had several horses to take care of. I was starting my side business. I had family and relationships and all of that stuff to take care of. And thank you so much for the hearts. I love that. It's very encouraging to me um, to know you appreciate what I'm saying. Thank you. So when I started my first business, I did not have time either. You know what? We all have the same number of hours in the day. We all have things we can say no to. 
in order to focus further in on our priorities. So I know it's possible for you to find five minutes a day to start working on your business. Five minutes a day instead of doing something else. I know it. Five minutes a day and then you're moving forward. So when you think about this, a lot of it is what story are you telling yourself about what's possible? You do not need to go take out a loan to do everything you want to do in the next five years today. You start with where you are. You start with what you have and you build. And in the process, you also validate your ideas. And you prove that they're right and you prove that they're going to work and you can transfer and move things a little bit along the way as you go. So, any questions? Any questions for me? Throw them at me about what things you feel like you have got to have a bunch of money for right now to start doing what you're doing. And let's talk about if there's a way that maybe you need less money or a way that you could could leverage some of that for your time. Let me know what questions you have. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about me. I talked about this some yesterday, but my first business or my first two businesses I started were uh, an, an online marketing business for small businesses, um, creating websites, Facebook pages, um, and then running Facebook ads once those became available, Instagram, Pinterest, social media platforms, advertising, getting leads, and creating a cohesive online marketing presence, online presence for brands. And so I leveraged that um, with really not even a lot of knowledge about it. I was a good writer. I wasn't a designer, I wasn't a programmer, but I was very passionate about people having a really good look and feel, and I was willing to, to form the relationships to help people, um, to, they trusted me, and then I pulled it all together. If I needed to work with somebody and share part of what I was getting paid to make it look good, I made it happen. I worked out of my passions. Along that same time, I love horses. If you follow me at all, you know I'm a horse girl. I never had horses growing up. I was never um, lucky enough to do that. My parents told me they were a king sport, so I did not, um, <laughs> they weren't available to me other than the little lesson I would take here or there, like I got my mom to fire the cleaning lady so that I could clean the house when I was young or babysit, I'm the oldest of four. And so I would save that money and I would take a lesson. And then a month later, I'd take another lesson. And I did one show, and I was a reserve champion, and it was one of the highlights of my life when I was in middle school. So when I became an adult, I had the opportunity to um, own my first horse, and I took it. Even though I had no idea what I was doing, even though he was a baby, gelding, little guy, weanling, and he's still with me today. He's 11 this year, and one of the total lights of my life. So after that, I decided that I really... I had this big dream of getting into, um, of owning some fillies and breeding horses that would perpetuate this rare bloodline that I had totally fallen in love with, that my gelding was of, and to make a business out of it. So I figured out a way to buy my first filly, who had a price tag of $40,000, and my second filly, who also had a price tag of $40,000, in sweat equity. Both of those, one of those alone was more than I was making salary-wise at the time, right? I was not the average person that they were selling these horses to. You know, I would go and I would look around and see who the other owners were, and I was like, young enough to be a daughter, sometimes a granddaughter of these people. And I was really, really passionate about it. And so I found a way, and the way that I did that, the way that I leveraged my sweat equity for $80,000 worth of horses was that I bartered. Now, I know that's controversial. You know, some people say you should never barter. Money is an exchange of energy. But that is what I did. It's part of my story. It's who I am. It's what worked for me at the time. Um, and so I built my horse business, which now is a six-figure business. Each of those fillies have grown up. They have produced high-quality babies of their own and um, show quality and... Um, brood mares and riding horses and all those different things. I built that based on sweat equity. I 
did the breedings the same way when I was ready to buy breedings to breed them. I did the board the same way. I got really, really creative. I found people I wanted to work with. I found they had something that I wanted. I had something that they wanted. And I was very trustworthy and provided great service and was really passionate about their brand as well as the services and the value that I provided them. And that came across. And so I loved doing the work and they loved having somebody who was so accessible to them and so knowledgeable and so skilled. But I started from really having no idea what I was doing and they would come to me and say, um, can we do this? Or can you do this? And I would say, yes, right? So I'd figure it out along the way because a lot of times I see people starting or not even starting because they're telling themselves some story about they don't have enough to start. They don't have enough to start. They don't have enough money to start. They don't have enough knowledge to start. They need a business degree. They need to take business classes. I say that's crap. You learn what you need to know as you go along the way. If you're a horse person, you don't expect to go into the top level amateur or professional arena the first time you take a lesson. But you're willing to get up and try and have somebody help you and learn as you go so that you can progress. For some reason, we have a totally different mindset when it comes to business. We feel like we need to know way more before we dive in. But how are we supposed to know way more? That attitude is going to keep us stuck until we become open to learning as we go, learning as we take action, gaining clarity from being engaged in the process, not from thinking about it forever, not from trying to mitigate the risk forever and ever and ever by thinking it through. Yes, there is a place for planning. I am a major planner. In fact, that's what I work with clients on is a clear, simple plan. Not getting overwhelmed. Or if, you're, if you come to me overwhelmed, getting you out of feeling overwhelmed. But so much of it is just about taking consistent action. And having people there to hold you accountable to do that, to figure out what your smart, consistent action is, and then to go do it. Because most of us, especially if we're perfectionists, especially if we're high achievers, especially if we're driven, and those are the kind of people I work with, we are so in our own heads about the fear of failure, fear of what other people are going to think, risk, all of that stuff that we allow those things to control our decisions rather than what we really, really want. And then we call it, we, we call it practicality. Or we call it, um, you know, being wise. But the truth is, we all have access to the resources that we need right now to go out there and do it. So much of this game is an internal one. Success is between the temples. There are people out there who are doing it. Hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. Good to see you here. Welcome. There are people out there who are doing it and who have way less skills than you do, just to be honest, are not as capable as you are. Maybe they're not as smart, but they're doing it. That's what separates the ones who are winning from the ones who are sitting and thinking and obsessing and ruminating about the what ifs. They're taking action. I worked in my business, my, my first business, my online marketing business for years alone, not sure how to grow beyond what I, the income level I had accomplished and really desiring to. And if, if I could go back and do everything differently, the one thing that I would do differently is I would, maybe even before I bought my first computer, instead of, maybe I would have used my husband's um, old, old, old PC a little bit longer and sat at our old, 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 his old bachelor pad 70s um, wood panel bar on a bar stool in the house I just moved into when we got married. That was my office in our kitchen, tiny kitchen. Um, maybe instead of buying my computer when, as soon as I could afford to from the business, I would have hired somebody to help me deal with this part of it first. 
because the strategies are everywhere and you can get overwhelmed trying to figure out which one to do but the truth is there are lots of there's lots of information out there what what I needed most was somebody to walk me through I tend to overanalyze and then stay stuck totally totally what I needed most, and maybe you too, Kim, was somebody to really challenge me and to take a real specific look at what I was doing, help me see what my unique gifts were, and get the heck moving. Because I could sit on the couch and get overwhelmed and spend a day like that. Or do mundane things that were maybe easy and repetitive, but that weren't really moving my business forward. So I didn't know what I didn't know. I still don't know what I don't know, right? But what I do know now is that having an expert to guide me is something that I will have for the rest of my life. Because in the last year, since I hired my first mentor, my whole life has changed. My income tripled within a month of hiring that person, even though I almost threw up when I hit the pay now button. I suddenly had accountability. I had expertise from somebody who had been where I wanted to go. And she was living the life I wanted to live and she could teach me the tools rather than me flailing around and like winding up feeling burnt out, which I had experienced several times as an entrepreneur. It's very common. I knew there had to be a better way to run my business. I knew it. And I thought if I, if I can't learn it, I don't want to do it. I want to learn the smart way to do this. I know I'm capable of more. I know I'm capable of making more. Suddenly my ability to make decisions changed and shifted. Um, I decided my husband and I were going to take a trip to Europe that we had been dreaming of for years and years. We moved into our dream house and all of this happened within months of me starting this journey of getting around Others who are like-minded on the same path, encouraging, and really having the support from a high-level mentor who was willing to call me out, uh, challenge me, and teach me, and encourage me, and really look at my situation and say, okay, what does Christine need? And so out of that realization, I took a look, and if you follow me, you know that part of one of the big parts of starting life with passion for me is that a little over a year ago, my daughter passed away and I took a, I was taking a really hard look at what I wanted my life to look like, what I wanted my legacy to be, how I was called to use my unique gifts and what kind of legacy I wanted to create for her because she wasn't here to do it herself. So out of that, what I realized is that I wanted to be the person for women who I wish that I had had when I was starting out. I wanted to be the person, I have a natural talent for encouragement and for insight and intuition. And I had used that with all my small business clients to really form fantastic strategies for them that were so much more than just doing their online marketing, right? We'd always start with their goals. We'd start with their ideal clients. We'd do these things that came very naturally to me. And I just, I didn't know that it was different. I just knew that the people who came to me and started working with me didn't leave. They stayed for years because I had the mix of strategy and mindset work and implementation Facebook ads, pages, websites, whatever, that they needed. I was like a one-stop shop. And so these are people who are already in business for themselves. I decided that I wanted to make it possible for more women to go into business for themselves because I knew how many years fear had held me back. I knew that I could be that, that bridge for other women. Yeah, absolutely, mindset is so important. And we talk about it to the point where it's become a cliche, but it's important no matter what level you are, no matter what stage in the process you find yourself. And often it's the thing that holds us back from getting started. It's the thing that holds us back from getting support because we're believing some story about how we can't afford it. When the truth is, What's our life going to look like if we don't get some insight and some challenge to move forward in a big way? For some of my clients, they couldn't afford not to. Maybe their money wasn't in a really strong situation 
But man, I mean, I have a client who was um, a couple of them, actually, I think about, who were just binge spending to cover up what they were really feeling and not even really sure what that was. They spent probably less than they were binge spending um, on these shopping sprees with me. And suddenly those cravings to binge spend went away because they were addressing what they really needed to address. And then they started making money in their new businesses. And so it wound up being a positive thing, you know? And the same thing for me when I hired my first coach, I wasn't sure where the money was gonna come from, but I set, my, I set it a goal. Okay, I've committed to this, I've paid for this, now I'm gonna make it back in my business to prove that this is a worthwhile investment. It's sort of the way I was looking at it at the time. I needed to prove it to myself. And my, the program also came with an optional trip to London. And I thought, well, now my business has to pay for the trip to London. I got to make a way to pay for that because I want to take advantage of it. And guess what? I did. I did because I had that accountability. And I also believe that it shows we take ourselves seriously. And we're taking our business idea seriously rather than like just kind of foofing around with it and saying, oh yeah, well, I'll figure it out. Like we go to college, we spend university, we go to grad school, we spend all this money on our education. We take out massive loans and no one seems to question that. But then when it comes to investing a few thousand dollars in our dream life, we're like, I don't have the money. What we're really saying is, it's not that important. What we're really saying is, if we found something that's speaking to us and calling to us and we say we don't have the money, what we're saying is it's really not that important in my value system. Because if that same amount of money was required for like something that was, you know, life-saving surgery for someone we loved, we would find a way to come up with the money. We would find a way, beg, borrow, or steal, we would do it. And we would do it in record time, am I right? I know. My husband and I have said we would have sold everything we had. We would have become homeless on the street. We would have leveraged and borrowed and all of that every penny we could. If we could have done if we would have done if we could have done anything to save our daughter. And this is after we clawed our way out of like crippling debt when we got married, student loans and credit cards and personal family loans, blah 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 blah. And we were like, we're not doing that again. At the same time, I can tell you we would have made that decision early last year if we'd been given the option. And so I really think it's how important are our dreams and what's the story we're telling ourselves. So that is a bit of a tangent <laughs> compared to how to start a business without capital. But it's very important because it is the one thing I would have done differently. And now, you know, it is such a privilege to be walking women through starting their own business in the smartest way so that they don't take six years and two burnouts before they go, okay, something's got to be different. They're starting out in the different way. They're starting out in a way that feels really good and not overwhelming and not overworking and they know they're doing the right amount of things every day and they can walk away and spend time with their husbands and their families and know that they're building their business and trust that and the anxiety goes, whoo. And the money goes, mm -hmm. it's amazing how that works. Any questions that are coming up for you, please ask, please ask about money, about, uh, about starting a business, about loans, about how to do something on the cheap, whatever. I do want to invite each of you to a free 30 minute call with me to determine your next step. If that's something that you're struggling with and you want some clarity, you want clear direction, if you've been dealing with a tough time in your business or having a tough time starting your business, um, Kim, you wish you would have gotten a coach when you started out too, right? What a difference it would have made. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm so convinced of it, the difference it's made in my life, in my businesses, also in the lives of my clients, and in their relationships. Many of them, their marriages have gotten better, and I'm not a relationship coach, but we're working on them. 
And that is transforming their relationship with their husband. It's amazing, 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 amazing. And such a privilege to be a part of. And such important, important work to participate in for yourself and then also to, um, to recognize and to acknowledge. Um, so if you are really committing to getting the support you need to change your life, if you're ready to do that, if on a scale of 1 to 10, you are at a 10 or an 11, which is something I hear a lot, if you really believe that, then it's time to really think about what you're doing to show that. And often that requires an investment of time and money to show that you're serious about it, to show that you are for real, to draw a line in the sand and say it's going to be different now. I'm not going to wake up anxious and overwhelmed and wishing for things anymore. I'm going to make them happen because I'm the one who's going to do it. You know, when I was younger, I think I sort of had this fantasy that like, well, the or somewhere along the lines I picked up that the way to have money for me was to marry rich. Um, it's not something that my mom ever directly told me, but somewhere along the way in a movie or a book or something, that's the idea I got. And so I had that floating around in my brain and, you know, one day I realized if I want money to do stuff, it's on me. And guess what? I'm capable of making it. I'm capable of making it. I am done waiting for someone else to give me an allowance to go do it. So... This stuff works. This stuff, people get on the phone with me and they say, oh my gosh, Christine, in 20 or 30 minutes, you just changed my life. Like you totally blew my mind. I never looked at it that way. I hear that all the time. So I invite you to get in touch with me, info at lifewithpassion.com. Tell me what's going on with you and let's get on the phone for 30 minutes. Let's just get you clear on your next step. Let's get you some direction. Totally free. Do that and give yourself the gift of it. If it's something that sounds exciting to you, a lot of times people get on the phone with me and say, oh, it's so nervous or it's kind of hoping you wouldn't call because I was just freaked out. I don't know what this is going to be like. Look, you're watching me live here. What you see is what you get. Um, and I've been an entrepreneur for 11 years now. And so what I do is I take all that stuff I've been talking about, all that experience, all that knowledge, all that mindset, I'm a tax ninja too, by the way, <laughs> and help you. A lot of people are dying in need of guidance and we're no exception. Absolutely. Everybody needs, it's like they say about a therapist, a therapist needs a therapist, right? Because they've got to process all the stuff they're dealing with. And I believe that, you know, we all need mentors. Oh, thank you so much. I love my Arabians. They're amazing and smart and wonderful and as friendly as puppy dogs. I knew the first time I met them that they were different than any horse I'd ever been around. Um, they're very, very sweet. Thank you, Kim. Um, totally a dream come true, as you can tell, because I started, uh, I didn't grow up with them. So that's something that I had made of myself. Awesome, emailing me, Candace, fantastic. Adore Arabs with my first horse. Oh, so great so great there's there's very very special um you know a lot of them um you know were brought into the tents with the bedouins at night to stay safe when they were born and so they have this incredible love for humans that i've never seen in another breed i'm sure it exists i haven't personally interacted with every breed of horse and every horse in the world but it's very very palpable uh Kim, I'm sorry you had to put your Arab down in, in December. 25 years, a member of the family, absolutely. Just like you said, totally, totally family there. My heart and just a real privilege to, um, to, to own, well, one of, the, one of the big breeders who I've worked with. Um, she always says, they don't, I don't own them, they own me. And that, you know, it's, it's just an honor to have them in our lives, right? Yeah, they're amazing. Um, <sighs> yes, could talk about them all day. My, my kiddos have six right now. And I've got two in training. 
and a couple moms who were hanging out and enjoying the pampered life of a Kentucky broodmare. And my gelding, who looks like a broodmare now, who's a, uh, an expectant broodmare because of the Kentucky grass in the spring. Um, but they, this is such a wonderful place to have horses. And I feel really lucky that even though I never thought I would wind up in Kentucky ever, ever, it's a pretty perfect place to have horses. And there's a reason it's called the horse capital of the world. Sorry, I was getting a call, as you could hear. Any final questions before we wrap up? Again, um, I really want to invite you to to take a um, to have a call with me if you'd like um, thirty minute call. I do have a horse business too. Yes, I breed. Focus seems to be in online businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the fact that I have my own breeding business, my own ag based business, and a lot of my clients are brick and mortar. So. Um, while a lot of times women who are wanting to start something are wanting to start something that's just a personal brand, um, based on them. Um, uh, I certainly work with other women, um, like you all have seen if you're in my group who are starting their own training businesses, who are starting all those types of things in the horse world. And my experience over the past 11 years as an online marketer has been working with brick and mortar, um, breeding operations, training operations, um, those type of operations who are, of course, have an online presence and supporting their online presence as they um, train and compete around the world and then market here domestically, locally, um, domestically and internationally and sell and export and import and all of that stuff. So yeah, um, often uh, first time entrepreneurs are interested in an online business um, because of the simplicity of it, because it can be a one person show. But um, most of my experience has been with much bigger operations, um, medical offices in addition to, you know, many, many specifically horse um, operations and then also oh, construction companies and you know you name it really um, around the around the country and then a lot of them with international operations as well but definitely horse people and horse businesses have been my niche and of course those can't really be strictly online based right so hey Jeremy great to see you thank you for the heart I hope that answers your question does I answer your question Candace um, I'll see here. But if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to hop off. So I've actually got a call with one of my mastermind partners that I'm going to get to here. Awesome. Okay. Well, you too. You have a great day too. It is great to talk to you. Email me if anybody wants to take me up on that offer to get on the phone and get some clarity and some direction about what's next for you. I'd be honored to support you in that, and I am looking forward to talking to you again soon. Bye. Uh, thank you, Joe. Glad I saw that. You should call me because he's picked up a lot of good tips for my scope sessions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and it's great to see you on here again today. Have a fantastic day.